How to use BPC-157 for rotator cuff injury. As someone who's no stranger to rotator cuff injuries, I've had four, not one, not two, not three, but four full thickness tears in my rotator cuff. And uh, yes, I've been able to repair those without surgery. So in this video, I'll talk to you how I use BPC-157 with regenerative medicine, and it made a huge difference. I'll tell you what not to do when it comes to BPC, where you could actually risk making the injury worse. But I'll also share with you a couple techniques that you can do to free up your shoulders that most people aren't talking about. So I'm Reagan Archibald. I've got obsessed with peptides about 10 years ago because I saw that they gave me more leverage in helping my clients achieve optimized health in a very short period of time. What we do is we run comprehensive blood labs so that we can predict exactly what pathways are the most compromised and then get you on the right peptide protocols so that you have some accuracy and predictability in your outcomes. So let's jump into BPC. So if you have rotator cuff injury, now the rotator cuff, there's so many different muscles and ligaments that are attached and make up your whole shoulder complex. Now, the area that most people are injured is that supraspinatus. And in my case, I was snowboarding at Park City Mountain Resort and it had a skier cut right in front of me. This was about 14 years ago. And I had two choices. I could hit a skier or hit a tree. And I love skiers, and, but I still took one out. I love trees even more. So I missed the tree and took out the skier. But when I got up, you know, it was a bad accident. I got an image, sure enough, full thickness rotator cuff tear. Six months, no relief. And then I got stem cells. And that actually gave me some breathing room. And then fast forward about four years later, I was skateboarding with my sons in Brooklyn and I tore my right rotator cuff and another full thickness tear rotator cuff. And uh, this time I use stem cells and BPC-157 in conjunction. And I can tell you that the time frame to results was compressed by almost 100%. Within six weeks on my right shoulder, I noticed an improvement versus took a little longer on my left shoulder with just the stem cells, which took almost three months before I was up to full capacity. The thickness tears were roughly the same, about six centimeters. And uh, man, it was uh, not fun to heal from those, but having BPC-157 has been a game changer. So just to test the hypothesis, I wanted to see, could I actually do something for rotator cuffs. Was this just placebo? Did they actually heal? And so I was skiing with my sons. This was five years ago. We're at Deer Valley. And uh, yes, I did take up skiing after I moved closer to Deer Valley. And I tore both rotator cuffs. I got an MRI and I sat down with the radiologist and he said, oh, Reagan, it looks like you've had um, surgery on both shoulders. I said, no, no, I fixed it with stem cells. And he's like, what? He could see where the suture, it looked like sutures. You could see where the repair took place in my rotator cuff. And he said, how is that? And I said, well, I use BPC-157 and explain the mechanism of action. You get better nitric oxides, you get all the signaling in the cells, you get angiogenesis, you get VEGF. And he was excited about it, and so was I, because I had some evidence there. So I do know that it works, but here's what you don't wanna do. You don't wanna just, if you have a torn rotator cuff, you do want to do physical therapy. This is one of the most mobile joints in our body. I mean, this shoulder complex is very, amazing because we can push with it, we can pull with it. I mean, this is your 180 degree movement. Similar to the thumbs, it's one of the most mobile joints in your body. And so you do need to move it the appropriate way. Most of you, I was like this in high school too, we just wanted to bench press. We just wanted to push heavy things. We wanted to do military press, bench press. But what you wanna do is two, twice the levels of pulling as you do pushing. So I do a lot of pull-ups these days. My son's always like, how many pull-ups do you do? I'm like, oh, 40. He's like, do 100. That strengthens the shoulders. The other real critical thing when you're using BPC or when you have rotator cuff injuries is a technique called dead hangs. Now, dead hangs, I created these 11 benchmarks. It's called Fitness 50 Benchmarks. You can look it up. In Fitness 50 Benchmarks, Dan Sullivan, who is the founder of Strategic Coach, he's a great mentor of mine. And uh, he came up to me and he's like, Reagan, what are the things that I wanna be doing as a fit 100-year-old that a fit 50-year-old can do? 
Now he's got a goal to live to be 156. And so he's got a really big vision. He's got determination to get to that number. And he's 82 and he's like asking these really powerful questions about how he can maintain his fitness. One of the 11 benchmarks that I uncovered in the research was your grip strength. And so the way that you can predict your grip strength, if you're in the elite level, you wanna to get to two minutes where you can do a dead hang. So you grab a pull-up bar, go to the local elementary school, grab the monkey bars, whatever you can do to hang and just hang and see how long you can hold on. But when you have a rotator cuff injury, you don't wanna do a passive hang where you're just letting your whole body rest. That can actually aggravate the tissue. You wanna do what's called an active hang where you squeeze your scapulas together and you hang. And even doing this for 30 seconds in the beginning, just slowly work yourself up if it's causing pain, go shorter periods of time, put a band around your legs so you don't have as much weight that you're holding on to. But it's one of the best things you can do. And then with your BPC-157, you wanna be injecting about one to two milligrams. Talk to your doctor about this, reach out to us, we'll help you out. But you wanna be injecting about one to two milligrams, ideally into that area. Now you can inject it subcutaneously into your abdomen like most of us typically do with our peptides. It will migrate to that area. It's still going to turn on the genes. The BPC-157, it's like the master key. It turns on so many different pathways for healing and regeneration that you can inject it almost anywhere and it's going to get there systemically. You're not going to get the same effect using oral BPC-157. You will get some systemic downregulation of inflammation, which will help the healing process, but it's not going to be robust enough for you to say that was absolutely breathtaking as far as how quickly I recovered from that injury. So if you do it wrong though, if you're injecting deep, you just wanna use your insulin syringe unless you've got a skilled doctor who can get the BPC-157 close to that tendon. You do not want to inject anything into a tendon for fear of it rupturing. There's some, there's some risk profile that you just want to avoid. But if you just want to do a general saturation of that area, you're going to get BPC a little closer. And some of the anecdotal evidence shows that you will turn on more of those receptors that activate nitric oxide, VEGF, by injecting into that damaged area locally instead of distally. Things you want to stack in there with it, you want to change your workout routine and you want to make sure you keep moving the shoulder. I know how bad it hurts at night. The worst thing at night is you can't lay on your side. Even if you're not laying on the shoulder, it's hurt. It just seems to ache like a tooth. I know the pain. I feel you. If it's a severe, like a full thickness tear, consider regenerative medicine. There's some phenomenal research on using some of these regenerative medicine materials from perinatal sources. We're learning more about it. They can be a really good foundational piece to just activate the body's healing. You stack it with BPC-157, add in a little bit of TB500, and you're going to see a massive improvement in your body's overall recovery from rotator cuff injuries. Do your dead hang, try to get to two minutes of dead hang, do that every single day, but don't do the passive until your shoulder can tolerate it. Do the active where you squeeze your scapulas together, almost like you're trying to do the beginning part of a pull up, and you'll notice a massive difference in your rotator cuff health. So if you love this video, I appreciate you being part of it. What I've done is I've got a video on how soon can you feel the effects of BPC-157, and I'll provide a link in the show notes below. Thanks for being part of the community. I'll see you on the next video.